Salut à tous, my name is Marion Buricatu. I am a French artist and I lived here in the United States since 2001. This video is about art and how to impress your friends and family at the museum with three easy facts. Why is regionalism so interesting? Well, merci for asking and the answer is very simple. Every art period has fun inside story that you've never heard before. Okay, here is the icon painting of regionalism. It's called American Gothic and it was painted by Grant Woods in 1930 and it is at the Art Institute of Chicago. Fact number one, back to the roots. Okay, I just told you American Gothic was painted in 1930. So if I tell you 1930, what do you immediately think? All of you who are so good in history. Well, right away you're thinking of the Great Depression. It started in 1929 with a crash of the stock market, millions of people unemployed, the worst economic downturn in the history of the industrialized world that lasted 10 years. An employment rate rose from 3% to 23%. Regionalism, art, move, art movement, you know what it is? It is Main Street versus Wall Street. Doesn't that ring a bell to you? Well, it's an idealized and romanticized vision of rural America during the 20s and the 30s. It's a reaction against modernism and industrialism. Fact number two, the triumvirate, which is a very difficult word for me to say, and in French it works, it works much better. In French we say the triumvirat. Well, so what does that mean? It means the main three painter of this movement. And I'm just gonna give them your name and a few explanations. Okay, first of all, this movement, the regionalism was a short-term movement. It lasted, it lasted kind of like 15 years, but really the height of its popularity was between 1930 to 1935. So really only five years. Okay, the first one is Grant Wood. As I showed you, American Gothic was painted in 1930. And by the way, the male figure was his dentist. Okay, next painting is Arbor Day. It was painted in 1932 and it is at the Museum of Fine Art in Boston. So, you can go and see it now. The next guy, the next painter was Thomas Hart Benton. So, he painted the people of Chilmark in 1920 and this painting is at the Hirschhorn Museum in Washington DC. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce the word right. Okay, next painting, America Today. It's a mural and it's at the Met in New York City. This mural is all about the contradiction between the good and the bad of industrialization and the modern world. Now, there is another painting and this one is called Corn and Winter Wheat and it was painted in 1945, so kind of late in the history of the movement. And you know where it is? It is at the Worcester Art Museum. And um, one thing about Thomas Hart Benton, he was a very good art teacher and he taught to Jackson Pollock. Okay, the third painter. The third painter is John Stuart Curie. John Stuart Curie painted this painting. It is called Baptism in Kansas in 1928. And this painting is at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. This is where he was born. He was born in Kansas. So we can understand his connection to rural America and how he felt when these people lost their job. Um, and this is another of his paintings, Hogs Killing a Snake in 1930. And this painting is at the Art Institute of Chicago. Fact number three. It's reaction against French art. French art. Well, how could they do that? Um, so, at that time in France, the craze was surrealism. It's a uh, kind of an abstract movement called surrealism because it's surrealist. Well, kind of all the movement in France in the 20s and the 30s were in reaction against the horror of World War, World War I. So, the First World War. And um, they, were, they, thought that, they thought that it was a form of a rationalism that brought uh, World War I, so they were really going against rationalism, hence paintings that were abstract. So the regionalist painter were going through some kind of like a teenage rebellion. Yes, and why is that? Because these three guys, the triumvirate, all of them trained in Paris. And they were showing signs that they wanted to, you know, get their independence from this 
you know, the parent style. And, you know, why would they do that? So they attempted to define a uniquely American style. But it didn't work because, you know what, the waves of modernity took over and the style about romanticization of rural America couldn't, couldn't work with what was happening in the world at that time. But it was a strategic withdrawal because, in fact, after World War II this time, the abstract expressionists were finally able to cut loose from Europe and they were able to create an, what is considered to be the first only American art movement who became uh, worldwide renowned. Okay, finally, a quick summary. Here are the main points easy to remember about the American art movement regionalism. First, back to the roots. Second, the triumvirate. And third, reaction, reaction against French art. Now, if you want to impress your friends and family even more, or just, you know, have fun at home, the next video is just for you. I created seven trivia questions about regionalism. You can print them out using the link in the next video. Also, if you're like me and you want to learn more and this is not enough, I have put a series of links at the bottom of this uh, video so you can click on them and learn more about regionalism. Nice chatting with you. Abonne-toi, which means subscribe to my channel. Have fun and see you at the next video.